up and worship the Lord. struggling, broken, and feeling defeated, I'm encouraging you guys that you're not alone. Remember, we have a God that is more powerful than what you think. All you need to do is just ask Him, be honest, right? Tell Him, hey Lord, I need your help. I can't take it anymore. But just be honest. 
and he's willing to fight for you and he's willing to help you and, the, and let's declare it today we are more than conquer because of him right I've tried so hard to see you. took me so long to believe it that you to someone like me to carry your victory Perfection could never earn it. You tell me why we don't deserve it. You take the broken things and raise them to glory. You are my champion. Giants fall.
bottle you've won. I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I'm seated in the heavenly place. I'm defeated by the power of your name. I am seated in the heavenly place. I'm defeated. With the one who has conquered it all. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you fight for us. We need you, Jesus.
Well, good morning, everybody. Honored to be here with you this morning. Pastor Will has been out sick all this week, so he called me in to, to share this week's message with you. If you don't know me, my name is Pastor Jared, and I have the privilege to pastor our Cortland location. It's the best location. Come on, let's give it up for our Cortland campus. <laughs> It's really, really good to be here with you and, and able to share some things that, that are on my heart. But first, let's welcome all our campuses. Come on, let's give it up for Montrose, Binghamton, and Corning, and our extension sites. Come on, welcome them this morning. Amen. I'm so glad you are here with us today. So, so there's a passage of scripture I want to read and I want to use it kind of as a launching pad to leap into our time together today. It's found in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 32. It's part of a story about a very influential biblical character. Um, his name is Jacob. And so in chapter 32, verse 24, we pick up at this very significant part of his life that I want to use as a teaching tool for us this morning. Amen? Amen? It says in verse 24, So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched at as he wrestled with the man, then the man said, let me go, it's daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what's your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome I want to stop reading there and I want to talk from the topic and, and our time together today, wrestling until you win, wrestling until you win. I was, I was raised in a small town called Granville, New York. History suggests, I, I looked it up this week, that my town was founded on, on dairy cattle farms and, and sheep farms and eventually um, slate quarries. There's a lot of slate in, in my town. Everybody has slate roofs, and it was a, it was a big high dollar business that kept a lot of people employed. Um, last I read, the the latest census of the population there was was 2,200 people in my town. 2,200 people. So I grew up. We had a few police officers, right? When they had one doctor's office, it was in a in a in a little house up the street. It was a converted into a doctor's office. Dr. Beckler, yep. Um, there's zero traffic lights. Even to this day, I don't think there's any traffic lights. I, I think there might be a blinking light, just like a blinking. I don't even think it's red. It's like a blinking yellow light, like slow down a little bit, right? So my high school graduating class was, was 73 people. And, and as you would imagine, being raised in a small town like that, there were not many options as it relates to extracurricular activities, right? So, so one of the activities we frequently engaged in was watching TV, right? We, you watch TV. So, so every, every Monday at, at, at 8 o'clock, I was seated in the same specific space to make sure that I got to watch wrestling with my dad. Come on, y'all. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So, so I'm talking about vintage wrestling, old school wrestling. It looks like it's, it's real wrestling, right? Come on, Ted, DiBiasity wrestling. Come on, Ric Flair wrestling. Turn to your neighbor and give him a good woo. Come on, look right. Woo. -hoo. Yeah, the ultimate warrior wrestling. Y'all remember the ultimate warrior? Yeah, real wrestling. If you can smell what the rock is cooking, wrestling, right? We, well, as kids, I was obsessed. We were obsessed with, with wrestling. We, we experimented on each other with the wrestling moves. Off the top bunk, I vividly remember breaking my shoulder. I had to go to the doctor's. I had to wear a sling because we were trying wrestling moves on each other. We made wrestling championship belts out of cardboard, right? Come on. We, we did that. WC, w, WWF. We loved wrestling. But I never imagined I would grow up and become a wrestler, right? And, and you may be thinking like, what? 
you're a wrestler. Yeah, I am. And truth of the matter is, so are you. And, and, our, and our matches might not be in public or our matches, they're, they're in private, right? But everyone who is seated in this space, everyone, no matter what stage and season of life that we are in, we are a wrestler, and we are, to some degree, are wrestling with something. And I just, I just want to encourage you and remind you, inform others that you don't have to wrestle alone, that you don't have to wrestle alone, that there is a partner who's on the outside of the ring and he's reaching his hand in over into your situation, waiting and wishing for you to tag him in so he can jump in the ring and help you. This name is Jesus. And he does not want you to wrestle alone. You need to hear that, church. And, and there may be a number of different areas that we are wrestling in and a number of different areas that we are wrestling with, right? But everyone is wrestling with something. For someone, it may be insecurity. For, for someone else, it may be anxiety. For, for someone else, it may be hyper, hypersensitivity, right? Or, or, or maybe, maybe it's workaholism, right? We just... Keep grinding, nothing to do. Well, there's more work to do. We are all wrestling with something and we are wrestling with different things. But in our time together today, I wanna to talk about something that many, if not most people in our current cultural context find themselves wrestling with. And that is many are wrestling with rejection. Rejection is, is a universal, unavoidable reality for all of us. Everyone has been and everyone will be rejected. Rejection is a refusal of others to accept, like, accept you for who you are or for who you are not, right? So, and everyone in some form has and will experience this at some point. We, we've been broken up with before. That's rejection, right? If we've applied for a scholarship or a grant and did not receive it, that's rejection. If we applied for a role and did not get it, that's rejection. If we are attempting to get a, a promotion and did not receive it, that, that is rejection. And each and every one of us has experienced it and will experience it if the most, listen, if the most influential person in human history, Jesus, experienced rejection, it's illogical for us to expect to live a life without experiencing it. Also, the Bible says that the, the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, right? That, that's Jesus, y'all. So if, if rejection is not properly lended and, 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 or tended to and addressed, it, it can become an emotional weapon, right? It, 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 rejection can be a weapon of, of mass destruction. The word rejection actually has Latin roots in it, and, and it means to throw backwards, to throw backwards. And if rejection is not managed in a healthy way, that's exactly what rejection will do to you and I. It can throw us backwards and it does so because rejection is a wound to our souls, right? It's a soul wound. And soul wounds are different types of wounds because they, the, the bleeding is invisible. It, it's internal bleeding. We, we can be bleeding and not know we're bleeding. And when this is not recognized, it, it's underestimated. And this is exactly what transpired with the group of people that God used, a man by the name of Jeremiah, to speak to, right? Because this people group was underestimating the importance of, of the wounds in their souls. And so God uses a, a, a man by the name of Jeremiah to speak to this people group and to talk about the importance of not underestimating a wounded soul, right? He says these words, they dress the wounds of my people as though they were not serious. Peace, peace, they say, but yet there was no peace. God is saying to this people group through Jeremiah that, that you are putting band-aids on something that needs stitches. 
right? You're putting band-aids on something that needs stitches. This is serious. It's serious because I think we all are aware of what can potentially happen to wounds, right? They, that, 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 that if they don't get tended to properly, they can become infected, right? And this is not always the wound that is dangerous, but the wound is not dangerous. The affection can be dangerous. I mean, no, the infection can be just as dangerous as the initial wound can be, right? And, and ladies and gentlemen, rejection produces infections. An infection that comes from rejections don't show up in the form of pain. It doesn't always hurt, but infections that come from rejection often show up in the form of personality traits, right? So, so like, they are postures that we adopt, identity issues that we develop. Like, like what if I told you that some people's timidity isn't their identity, that's an infection, right? What if, I, what if I told you that some callousness and some hard-heartedness and some indifference and some apathy is not an identity, right? That's not your identity. That, that, what if I told you that was an infection? What if I told you that people-pleasing tendencies and, and, and the approval of man and, and the addiction of, of, of approval is, is not your identity, but that's an infection from rejection? Could it be that it's an absolutely um, inconsistent with who God has called us to be, who God made us to be, and who God intends for us to be? And I want to encourage someone today, and I want to let you know that your history does not have to be your destiny. And where you have been does not determine where you're going. And what has happened to you does not determine what can happen for you. That God wants to introduce you and me to a you and me we hadn't even met yet, right? 2 Corinthians 5.17 says there's a new creation in Christ Jesus. That means there was an old one, and now there's a new one. There's there's an old me and there's a new me. And I'm just saying God wants to introduce you and I to a you and I we haven't even met yet. Amen. And, 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 and listen, this, this you and I, we haven't, it's a stronger you. It's a focused you. It's a wiser you. Come on. It's a you that, that steps into the reality of God's best for your life. And you tap into the potential because God did not give us anything that he intends us to waste. Listen, he gave us potential because he wants us to use it for, for our, our, our purpose, right? So our potential is necessary for our purpose purpose. And our purpose is always an answer to a problem. So when we don't reach our potential, we don't fulfill our purpose, and we don't fulfill our purpose, then we leave some problems in the earth that God created for us to address unaddressed. Right? But that becomes unlikely and in some instances impossible when we don't wrestle to win. Anyone knows what it feels like to, to wrestle? Wrestling can be really unpredictable. Wrestling is an activity of momentum. There are times when you may feel like I, I, I'm on top of this. It's going my way. I got this in control. I could take them out by the end of the second round. And, and things like as they should, it just seems right. And next thing you know, there's... It, the time, the, the momentum shifted and what you were on top of is now on top of you, right? It's now on top of you, but we've got to wrestle to win. And there's an example in Genesis that I believe you and I can learn from today. There's a wrestler in the scriptures. And I know you don't know that, but wrestling is in the Bible. There's a wrestler in the scriptures and, and, and his name was Jacob. Jacob's story is a story that is inundated with and is filled with rejection. Jacob grows up in a home where his father blatantly shows favoritism toward his brother. Not only that, was he rejected by his father, he grew up rejected by his brother. He dealt with some friendly fire in the home. And I want to tell you that like all rejection isn't created equal. There are some voices that we value more than others. There are some opinions that matter to us more than others. And Jacob's experience dealing with rejection in his own home was unique. It was different and it impacted him in, in unique ways because it caused 
caused him to act out in ways that were unhealthy. It caused a strain in his relationship, not only with his father, but also with his brother. He had to, to leave home prematurely. He had to go. He, he, he lives his life, gives birth to his children. His parents are not there to, to be a part of it. He gets married. His, his father and mother are not there to witness it. He has career success and his family's not there to, to congratulate him or to celebrate with him. He has grown. He is a successful man, but he is still dealing with, with the residue of rejection. The Bible says that, that he makes a decision. He's going to attempt to reconcile with his brother. And as he does so, he, he begins the journey toward meeting his brother, whose name is Esau, right? You guys know what I'm talking about. We're reading it this week in the Bible reading plan. I hope you're tapping into that. So good to, to be doing that as a church, right? His name's Esau, right? And he doesn't know how this exchange is going to be, if it's going to be contentious, if it's going to, to get physical. So he makes sure that, that he sends his family away. And we picked it up right there in verse 24, where the Bible says, and Jacob was left alone and he wrestled. And I got to thinking about that. He was left alone and he wrestled. Come on, isolation can be evil, right? But there are times where God uses isolation for our transformation. There are times where God uses isolation as an opportunity for us to do some serious soul searching, Right, that we could not do when we were caught up in the rhythm of life and in the noise of life. All isolation is not evil. Some isolation is orchestrated by God the Father to produce transformation in our lives. Right? He's left us alone. And the Bible says in verse 24, and he wrestled with a man until daybreak. And he wrestled with a man until daybreak, verse 24. But when he got to verse 27 through verse 29, the Bible says, Jacob engages the man he's wrestling with. And the man tells him, I'm getting ready to change your name because you have wrestled with humans and with God and you have overcome. So, so listen to this, guys. Now, this is for all my note takers. On the back of your packet, your seat packet. If you're taking notes, I hope you're taking notes. Listen to this. In verse 24, Jacob thinks he's wrestling with a man. In verse 28, Jacob sees he's wrestling with God. In verse 24, he thinks it's one thing. In verse 28, he sees it's God because there are some things we are calling one thing in verse 24, but he will be calling it a God thing in verse 28. Come on, on some things in our life that we will be calling pain in verse 24, but if you can live to verse 28, you will call it purpose. There are some things that, that we're calling burdens in verse 24, but if you you can live to verse 28, you'll be calling them blessings. Come on, somebody. And I just want to ask a question and reflect back over our life because I believe if we do so, we can all come to the conclusion that there were some things we were calling one thing in one season and we were looking back on that and now we're calling it a blessing in disguise in another season. He called it, he called it a man in verse 24, but as God in verse 28 because because God doesn't always show up looking like God. Did you all hear what I just said? Sometimes I feel like God shows up opening doors, but I want to tell you God also shows up closing doors, right? That's the same God that is good when doors are open. He is the same God that is good when doors are closed. And the God who loves us enough and who is invested in our lives and our welfare and well-being that God refuses to allow us to make wrong choices that is going to be catastrophic to our lives. Right, so, 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 so that God removes options from us by closing doors. And because we are convicted that God's goodness extends to open doors and closed doors, we should show gratitude and gratefulness when doors open, but we should also show gratitude and gratefulness when doors close. 
Come on, church, because God didn't always show up looking like God. But notice this, verse 28 text says this, you have wrestled with God and humans and have overcome. No other human was there but Jacob, right? There's nobody else there. Could it be this is a metaphor for something if no other human was there but Jacob? And verse 28 records Jacob hearing these words, you have wrestled with men and with God and overcome. Could it be that the person Jacob was wrestling with was himself? Could it be that wrestling with God and man is the wrestling that all of us have to do? The wrestling match, the, the tension that exists between who we used to be and who we can be, right? The old us and the new us. The God that's trying to put us into, into our future and, and the self-sabotaging part of us that tries to keep us in our past right? Well, what's interesting though is in the middle of this wrestling match, the one that Jacob is wrestling with says these words, right? He says, he says, let me go. And Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. In other words, I will wrestle until I win, right? They wrestled all night, the Bible says, that they, that they wrestled for hours. They didn't stop wrestling till daybreak, but Jacob made up his mind, I will not stop wrestling until I win. And, and all throughout the night, I, I'm sure there were shifts in momentum. It seemed the, like Jacob had an advantage, and, and then it may seem like Jacob was losing. But no matter which way the battle went, no matter how the tide shifted, Jacob made a decision in his heart, I will not let you go until you bless me. I will not stop wrestling until, until be, I, I become the best version of myself. I, I will not stop trying until I get on top of what, what, to what, what used to be on top of me. I will not stop putting forth my best effort until I become my best self. And I believe there's a lesson that, that we can learn from Jacob because there are times we all suffer with, with even, even me, faith fatigue. And, and we want to give up on us. We want to give up on yourself. But, but may we adopt the spirit and the attitude of Jacob that says, I will not quit. I will not give up. I will not bow down and give in until you bless me. Right? What, what's interesting is, is not just what Jacob said, but when he said it, this was, this is, uh, uh, revelatory for me this time, right? If he said it at, at, he said this at a point in his life where he was married, he had children, he had experienced career success, but yet still he says, I won't let you go until you bless me, right? Which means his, his request was not to receive something. His request was to become someone. Come on, somebody. And, and because he had achieved enough, right? He had already obtained enough, accomplished enough to know that there's no such thing as enough. There's never enough, right? So, so there was still a wound in his soul that, that his accomplishments could not heal. There was an emptiness in his heart that his achievements could not heal. There was a place that, that was wounded in him so deep that nothing he had acquired or obtained could reach, right? And he says, I won't let you go until you bless me. I will wrestle until I win, that some of my experiences I've had and that Jacob have had in, in life, rejection shaped him into a version of himself that was less than God's best. And Jacob makes a decision to wrestle with himself and with God so that he doesn't allow his history to determine his destiny. Can I pray for you today? Jesus, we just thank you, God. We thank you that our history doesn't determine our destiny, God. 
God, that, God, that you've called us from, from young children. God, that you've put a, a purpose in our life. God, you've placed potential in our life. God, I pray for a strength and a favor and a grace on our life. God, that we would be able to move forward in, in your strength and grace to be all that you have for us, God. Lord, we love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. We never like to close a service without giving you the opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. For me, everything changed when I made this decision. So if that's you, you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, then would you say this prayer with me? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Repeat after me. Jesus, I come to you just as I am and confess my sins to you. I believe you died on the cross for me. I will no longer be bound by guilt or sin. I declare that your sacrifice on the cross has set me free, and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins and trust in you alone as my hope of salvation. Through faith in your resurrection from the dead, I declare that I and a new creation. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. If you just said that prayer, we would love for you to fill out your response card so we can help you with your next steps. This is your church home now, and we cannot wait to see you next week. Thank you.